Jesus, please take us from this grandstand world. It's time we got into the game. We're so tired of this grandstand world where feelings never seem to change. Welcome to another episode of Leaving the Grandstand World, live. Yep, I'm alive. As usual, what I'd like to do is share some writings that are fresh and also a hymn poem that is made especially for these live podcasts so you'll hear some something new I'd like to start with a writing entitled Johnny Jesus Seed Johnny Jesus Seed I like the story of John Chapman who lived from 1774 to 1845, near Fort Wayne, Indiana. He is better known as Johnny Appleseed. He traveled far and wide, giving and selling apple seeds and saplings to pioneers. He was a Bible-believing man with a generous heart and a kindly nature who loved people and animals. I identify with him to a degree. I am not distributing apples and apple trees, though. I, I am distributing Jesus, his love, his glory, his mercy, and his righteousness. I am Johnny Jesus Seed. Can you identify with that? My seeds are planted in the soil of many minds where they are watered with curiosity and interest. They then grow into the fruit of compassion and love for others. This world is filled with many fertile minds hungry to realize that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life for us all. This hunger takes the form of fear, anger, apathy, hopelessness. This hunger can only be satisfied with Jesus. Look around you. Do you see that there is much darkness that needs the light? Much fear that needs God's love? And much unrest that needs the rest and peace and joy that can only come through Jesus Christ? You are truly needed. Why not be a Johnny Jesus seed? Yes, be a Johnny Jesus seed today. If God moves you to preach the gospel, this may be your method of distributing Jesus. But it is possible your method may be different. You could simply know Jesus deeply, sharing his smile through yours, sharing his joy by your countenance, making people acknowledge you and wonder what makes you so happy. The world awaits expectantly the many dormant Johnny Jesus seeds who do not know they were born to share his light born to love unconditionally, born to distribute Jesus seeds themselves. It's easy to 
Look around and think how much the world needs Johnny Jesus seed distributors. It's very easy to sit in the grandstand world and hope that the players on the field will get their act together and share those Jesus seeds. Come with me. You say, what? Come with me. Leave this grandstand world. March down to the field and grab a bag of Jesus seeds to distribute. Are you ready? I want to share another writing that's called Let's Drain the Swamp. Let's drain the swamp. Should that be left up to one lone individual, the President of the United States? Should that be his responsibility only? I'd like to think not. I'd like to think we all need to drain the swamp. Here's the writing. Most certainly you've heard by now that our president has always wanted to drain the swamp. Some do not even think a swamp exists, but those who do recognize that there is some sort of dark power that wants to take away our pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness. We need to understand that in the light of God's word. I'm going to quote Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 17. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. If all of us would not focus so much on the outer manifestations of our inward lives, we could stop running on a perpetual treadmill, going nowhere, accomplishing nothing, to try to stop an evil force by playing a game of whack-a-mole in the physical world is fruitless. Whack-a-mole is a game where you try to whack a creature emerging from one of nine holes as rapidly as you can. But when you whack it and it sinks back in the hole from which it emerged, another creature immediately pops up from another hole which needs to be whacked. On and on it goes, never stopping one whack after another, with a mallet of man's making. Only God's mallet of righteousness will succeed, but we're too busy whacking away 
with our own devices to allow God in all his majesty to whack the creature once and for all. We must stop looking outside ourselves and go within to where our collective problems reside. Even if we don't feel we had anything to do with these negative situations or negative incursions, they are affecting our lives and we must go within to receive God's healing balm rather than to continuously, fruitlessly whack at the outer manifestations. This requires a massive effort to get at the problem where they reside instead of trying to solve the problems where they are not. It is easy to point our fingers at people and situations and blame them for all our difficulties. But do not forget who we are and what the nature of our being is. We are spiritual beings who temporarily live in a material world. We are not material beings who happen to have a trace of spirituality coursing through our veins. Believe it or not, we need to downplay the physical and upplay our spiritual identities. So, do this. Turn within to your thought man or thought woman and strive to drain your swamp. If you have not done this yet, ask Jesus to clear out the money changers from within your heart. Tell the Pharisees that dwell within you that you are not going to stand for their religious formalities any longer. Just talk to God as if he were your best friend and invite him to wipe away everything that keeps you from your pristine and blood-bought holiness. If we all do this, if we all do this, we will see a supernatural change occur that will surprise even the most devout of Christians and overwhelm even the evilest of our enemies. Our material world will fall in step with our spiritual one. To win, we must not go through this fight in the usual way with fists raised and swords unsheathed. We must go about this fight with hands clasped, heads bowed, and eyes closed on our knees. And know, I mean really know, that this battle is already won. Praise God. There's the two articles that I shared for today, and uh, it's really fun to talk with you and to uh, have this very special time. I would like to, as usual, end with a hymn poem, original, uh, produced solely for this broadcast. Although I have a whole lot of uh, hymn poems out there on Amazon and Spotify and other places, these are specifically for you watching this podcast. And I hope you enjoy them. They add a very special, heartfelt, emotional con closure to this podcast. That's why I like to end with one and get your get your emotions stirred up and your love of God inflated. And so with that, 
I say goodbye. Until next time. Bright and glorious is the sky. Radiant are the heavens high. Where the golden stars were shining. And the rays to earth inclining. Beckoning us to heaven above. Beckoning us to heaven above. On that holy Christmas night, through the darkness beamed a light. All the stars above were paling, all their luster slowly failing. As the Christmas star drew nigh, as the Christmas star drew nigh. Sages from the east afar, when they saw this wondrous star, went to find the king of nations and to offer their oblations unto him as lord and king, unto him as lord and king. Him they found in Bethlehem, yet he wore no diadem. They but saw a maiden lowly, with an infant pure and holy, resting in her loving arms, resting in her loving arms. Guided by the star they found, him whose praise the ages sound, we too have a star to guide us, which forever will provide us with the light to find our Lord, with the light to find our Lord. As a star, God's holy word leads us to our King and Lord. Brightly from its sacred pages, shall this light throughout the ages shine upon our path of life, shine upon our path of life. Bright and glorious is the sky, radiant are the heavens high, where the golden stars were shining and their rays to earth inclining, beckoning us to heaven above, beckoning us to heaven above. On that holy Christmas night, through the darkness beamed a light, all the stars above were paling, all their luster slowly failing, as the Christmas star drew nigh, as the Christmas star drew nigh.